Hey everyone, Scooby-Doo here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're actually going to be covering some of the vendors that I use. And we're going to be looking at some 3D printing, some helmets, and some signs. We're also going to be taking trips into the Star Wars room, so I apologize ahead of time if the camera gets a little bit shaky. So first we're going to talk about 3D printing, and this is actually a 3D printed control panel from the Death Star. This is uh, from where R2-D2 and C-3PO are in the control room on their rescue of Princess Leia. Now, <clears throat> generally, with my shelving and my dioramas, I try to use uh, the 3.75 vehicles and creatures and play sets, but sometimes there just isn't anything available, um, like in this case, for the control panel. So what I wanted to do first is I wanted to show you some of the things that I already have up on the Star Wars wall and some of the differences between using the 3.75 and the 3 3D printing, excuse me. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera really quick. We'll walk into the other room and take a look at a few examples. All right, so here's where the camera might get a little bit shaky. Again, I'll try to hold it as steady as possible. So you can see here with some of my hot toys and sideshow figures, I use the 3.75 like the Banta and the Dewback, and uh, also use the 3.75 Land Speeder, Sand Crawler. Uh, if we come over here, this is uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Brew's house. Uh, all 3.75, and they work out great. Unfortunately, sometimes I need other items so I do some 3d printing this is the Emperor's uh, window or throne room window we'll be taking a closer look at that once we get in the new hot toys Palpatine and Royal Guards hopefully by next week and then some of my 3d printing that I've had done already which is uh, the tractor beam we got the 3d printed uh, monitor which is right here and uh, this is down here is where that control panel is going to go with the R2-D2 and C-3PO. For some reason, my camera didn't want to focus in for that. So, um, yeah, so there's different varieties of things that you can use. And uh, the vendor that I use for the 3D printing does a really great job. And um, we'll talk more about that in the other room. So let me go ahead and pause the camera again and we'll get back in there. Okay, so again, you can see here with the 3D print job, he also made me, uh, this gonna go on the shelving is one of the control panels, which is here. This is more of a 1-6 scale panel. Um, probably do a separate video on this particular panel where I'll do the paintwork on it. Should be pretty easy to do. Pull like a Bob Ross type thing on it. And uh, so look, for that video coming up soon because I actually want to complete those shelves uh, on the wall. So this vendor here, what's nice about him is that he actually does uh, the artwork as well. And he's a Star Wars fan, so I, I don't have to do a lot of explaining. Uh, he knows the kind of work that I do. And so I just say, hey, I need a control panel. What can you do? And he actually designs it. Great communication. He's really fast, uh, his pricing is really reasonable. And so um, I will leave his email contact information down below in the description. Now our next thing we're gonna talk about is signs. I don't have a sign uh, out here on the counter, but I generally use acrylic signs, but those can get a little bit expensive and there's a size limitation from my vendor as far as how big he makes them before the price just gets way too expensive. So what I decided to do is I went with some uh, styrofoam type signs. I found this vendor on Etsy and um, told him what I was looking for and he had absolutely no problems making it whatsoever. So we're going to take one more trip into the uh, Star Wars Empire room and we're going to take a look at one of the signs that uh, he made me. Okay, so this is my life-size Darth Vader. And if you can see right here, we got the Empire sign. And this is made out of styrofoam. It's uh, about 24 inches in diameter. 
Looks fantastic. Now the only thing with this vendor is, is that he does everything by hand. So being that this is a circle, it's a little bit off, which is the reason why I kind of have it behind Darth Vader. Cause I'm kind of picky about measurements. Uh, but for what he charges and for what he makes, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Now he also made me a FET, uh, a FET sign as well. And we will take a look at that uh, at the end of the video. That's actually in the Mandalorian room. But I just wanted to show you uh, this options for signs. Which I think, again, it, he, he did a fantastic job. Kind of pull away a little bit. Alright, so there's the sign. I'll go ahead and head back in the other room. All these trips back and forth. I just wanted to just give you examples of the different work that my vendors do. And I will leave a description down below for that guy, for the signs. I'm actually going to be uh, having him make me some Jurassic Park and Jurassic World signs for my Jurassic room uh, that we're actually going to be start building soon. And uh, so now this leads us on to our third category, and which is helmets. These two helmets here were made by Zero Cool. He actually has a uh, page on Etsy and on eBay, and I will leave a link down for both of those. Uh, he more he more specializes in Mandalorian helmets, uh, and not just Fet or not just Jango or Boba. He also just does other. Uh, Mandalorian helmets as well. He also sells kits or he can paint them for you. So obviously is Django here. Uh, fantastic work. Fantastic work, especially for the price. Uh, very solid. I'll show you here on the inside. By the way, it's just melt like really good. Visors thick and really clean work inside. You can just see how nice this is done. Very, very, very professional. Great communication. Um, this one's pretty much complete as far as the helmet goes. Now, my other FET helmet here, and I don't have the range fighter on because I actually have a, a custom one that lights up that I'll be uh, installing. Um, his paintwork on this one is really good, but I'm going to actually go back in and re-weather it and add some more painting to it. But again, just excellent quality, very, very solid. And uh, I would highly recommend him, especially for the price and the customer service. He makes really good helmets. Um, one thing with getting helmets I found is that, uh, especially with like Stormtrooper helmets, which we got one right over here. Now this is a black series. Uh, when you're looking for helmets and you're looking to join the 501st, which I'm not part of, uh, but I might join them at some point. Fantastic organization. Um, a lot of vendors will put down 501st approved, and that's not always the case. I don't know where they... Uh, think that they can just say it's 501st approved because it actually has to be approved. So I'm not sure if they say it because their helmets have all of the requirements that are on the list or if they're just that confident. But just be a little bit skeptical when they say 501st approved. Also, when looking for helmets, especially against Stormtrooper helmets, if they say it's coming from an original mold or from, you know, the exact movie helmet or not exact movie helmet but a replica of the exact movie helmet from like 1977 um that's not always a good thing now if somebody actually wanted to give me a full armor set um that was actually used in the movie i would take it and i'd put it in a case and i would never put it on i would just have it on display but as far as wearing it or using it Probably never would because you got to realize that in 1977, um, the technology wasn't as good. And when they built these helmets, they used just a lot of parts that they went and got at hardware stores and different things. And so I've actually got one of those helmets before. And you'd be surprised. 
I mean, they are probably what they looked like on the movie set, but they're not actually put together very well. There's a lot of gaps in here. They just use screws for this part. Um, and that's not how I see a Stormtrooper helmet. I see a Stormtrooper helmet like this because we're watching it in the movie. So it looks perfect. It looks really well made, but in all honesty, it's a prop. Uh, I used to live in LA. I did extra work. Uh, I've been in commercials and TV shows, and I can tell you that when they give you props to use, <laughs> especially if you're like further back in the scene, like you're, you know, like a hundred feet off from the main camera, uh, the quality isn't going to be that great. So again, when you go to purchase a helmet and they say it's just like the one in the movie, well... You might be a little bit shocked to find out that the quality really isn't that great. It might be accurate, but it won't be great. So I would probably stick with uh, a newer version on a Stormtrooper helmet. But by all means, if you want the 1977 one, just note that the uh, lenses probably be that really flimsy plastic. Uh, there'll be a lot of gaps. Uh, the paintwork on it won't be that great, but it will be authentic. But for what you're actually thinking a Stormtrooper is in a movie, Black Series will work just fine. All right, so what else are we going to talk about? I guess I should have scripted this. Um, another vendor that I use uh, will actually be... I'll, I'll leave a link down below on the next video when we actually start covering my FET build. Um, and this here is my gauntlet. Or one of them. Um, this fender does awesome work. Now this still needs to be weathered. I'm still going to go and do some more painting. But you can see here with like the buttons. And you can actually see the keypad here. And this item's metal. It's separate. It's nicely casted and molded. Got the flamethrower section here. This is all metal. Um, actually has magnets. Pull this open. It's really sturdy. It is a little bit big. Open it up on the inside. Again, it's just held together with magnets. Um, a lot of times when you get armor from other vendors, the quality isn't that great. Not like this. this the quality on this is awesome. And it's not that great because they kind of did make it like, again, in the 1977 movie, they, they use like a, a one mold. And so all this is going to be kind of janky and uh, off a little bit. And if you look at it closely, it's not going to look real. It, it actually looks terrible. Now, if you get about four or five feet away, it looks fine. And that's exactly how you saw it in the movies. But um, again... Just be kind of careful when you're ordering stuff uh, because when it's screen accurate, well, you might prefer something like this that's actually made for costuming. That's made more in detail because again, in the movies, they made the props and they made them well, but in some cases, if you look at them really closely, they're not that great. So there we go. There's uh, some of my vendors or some of my helmets. Um, I'll go ahead and pause the camera one more time. We'll get the uh, Django Fett helmet up in the Mandalorian room and I can show you that other sign. I'm not going to show you the whole room yet because I'm working on a lot of stuff with it and I want it to be kind of a surprise once I get it all completed. Uh, again, we're going to be doing the uh, paint work on this hopefully this coming week. And uh, actually, what am I going to be doing? I think for the rest of the day, I'm actually going to be working in the Jurassic Park room because I actually have a hot tub in there and I got to clean the hot tub and get that ready because we're getting into fall. The weather here in California is still really warm, so it's not really hot tub weather yet, but I think I'm going to go ahead and clean that and get some of the stuff started in that room. So if you're a Jurassic Park fan at all, stay tuned for those videos. So we're going to go and wrap this up by going into the other room and taking a look at Django Fett. And our Django Fett helmet on display. 
Now I actually have some accent lighting, some blue coming up. This is from behind my TV set. Um, you can see here another one of the signs that I had the guy make me. Really nice. Added some uh, pistols. These are Hasbro ones. I uh, not Hasbro. Well, Hasbro slash uh, rubies. I think. Guess it's more accurate to say rubies. Uh, these have been repainted. They still work. And then what I did is I actually uh, added a wall helmet. This mount just fits right on there. And yeah, so you can see the sign, the helmet. I really like how the display worked. And yeah, so again, uh, if you're needing any of those different items that I showed, really please uh, check out my vendors' websites or contact them by email. They really do some fantastic work. If you have any questions about it, anything, uh, always feel free to ask down below. And hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend, and we shall talk to you guys later.